Zook, good morning. How you doing? DA, great to be with you. And by the way, if anyone wants quote-unquote investment advice as they watch their sports, uh, our boy Rick Neuheisel, who you just mentioned, has correctly picked his upsets, outright winners, 10 out of the last 12 weeks on our Tuesday night CBS Sports Network show, including some truly zany ones most recently uh, nailing Ohio State to beat Michigan. So New Heisel is all over it. Is he using the number as well? That's what we're saying. Yeah, he. it, it is our weekly upset pick. The guys get extra points for their season picking total where we normally just do winners. You have to pick an outright winner, upset. You get extra points depending on how big the number is. And uh, he's nailed some monster ones. Such a good, such a good plug. There you go. Inside college football. Natural. CBS Sports Network. Adam Zucker joins us here on the show. Oklahoma, Ohio State. That's what we're debating this morning. We're waiting for the college football rankings to come out tonight. Who do you de- believe deserves number four? Uh, for me, it's still Oklahoma. Um, I know Ohio State has the better win uh, on the heels of what they did to Michigan and put up more points than Michigan's ever allowed in regulation. Uh, I can't get past what happened to them against Purdue. Kind of reminded me what happened to them against Iowa last year. And then their game against Maryland was very typical of a lot of Oklahoma's wins where it comes down to a denying a two-point conversion somewhere along the way. Uh, Oklahoma is setting all kinds of new numbers, and, and we've seen big numbers from the Big 12 teams before, but they're the first team to win – four straight games where they allow over 40 points and they are coming off being the first team to do it in three straight games and eight games now where they've where they've cracked 45 points and and the first team to do it since you know forever uh so they're doing it their way and the oklahoma west virginia game was like watching a tennis match just when are they going to break serve and and when they do to me it was like rams it was when the defense has made a stop it was a touchdown of their own uh, so Oklahoma's playing a different different kind of football. Uh, it's highly entertaining. I think Kyler Murray can make his case for the Heisman because without him, they lose, I think, half their games, whereas Tua Tungvaluwa has taken Alabama from just undefeated to perhaps unbeatable uh, with what he's able to do. Georgia-Bama coming up on Saturday. The question is, does Georgia stand a chance? They went toe-to-toe with Alabama National Championship game last year. Do you give them a chance on Saturday? I do. Uh, I think Georgia can run the ball, and their offensive line's been really banged up. DeAndre Swift was banged up most of the year. He was out there, but he wasn't 100%. He is now, and he's fierce. And I didn't think Georgia would be able to get back to this level uh, a year after losing you know, Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle. We knew Swift was good. Uh, we didn't know Holyfield could be counted on as much. They got McCall Hardman, who's a crazy dangerous weapon. Jake Fromm's got the highest passer rating, depending on which metric you look at in the last five weeks. And their defense, they don't get pressure on the quarterback, but it's almost like they don't try. They just send three or four, and, and then they try to just cover you. Uh, so, you know, I don't know that they can stop Alabama enough, but if they can score enough on Alabama, then we have a repeat in the same location, mind you, of where, uh, of where Tua took off on the launch pad in the national championship game. So I think Georgia's got a shot. What's interesting also with the SEC scheduling, you know, Georgia against LSU is something we only get once every, like, five, six years. Georgia had to go to LSU. Uh, They got blown out. But that game normally wouldn't have been on their schedule anyway. Like, they might have any other year. They could have played Bama, yeah, but they always play Auburn. Any other SEC West team, they're coming into this game undefeated themselves. And we're talking about both of these teams being able to carry a loss out of Saturday if it's a close game. That's a good point. Arkansas, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, they would have blown out all those teams, and so they would have been undefeated potentially. Adam Zucker joins us from College Football Today on CBS getting ready for the SEC title game. If Georgia does pull the trick, would you still put Alabama in the Final Four? Yeah, if it's close, I I probably would. If it's close and two is not hurt and something like that, I I would uh, based on on what the other teams have done. I don't know that Oklahoma beats Texas, to be honest with you. I, I think Ohio State beats Northwestern, but Ohio State's pretty much surprised us against the wrong teams with the effort against Maryland on defense, and uh, and they got run over by Purdue, too. So Northwestern's not a big running team. They are getting Flynn Nagel, their leading receiver back, so Clayton Forsell will have his guy. 
and they play really disciplined defense, which I thought Michigan suddenly failed to do. They couldn't keep up with Ohio State's speed. It'd be hard to keep Alabama out, but I also think, while I think that they are a top-four team with a loss, I think we're at a point now, I don't really care about Alabama fatigue, what happened last year and all that, but what are we doing if if a conference championship game is not a national quarterfinal, whether it's one team or two teams that are in the in play for that playoff, how can you how can you lose that game and still be in? It just it just doesn't sit right with me. Uh, I think it, I think if Alabama loses this game and gets into the playoff, it's either the end of conference championship games or it's the end of the four team playoff. The next time things get negotiated, not not immediately, not next year. But if they can lose this game and still get in, while other teams are sitting there with conference titles in Oklahoma and Ohio State, you know, give, give me six teams, give me eight teams with a G5 qualifier in there, because uh, otherwise it just doesn't feel right. It, did, it, it didn't feel great when they got in after losing the Iron Bowl, but they're, they were compared with an Ohio State team that had a bad loss and had two losses that were noble enough to play Oklahoma. So, uh, again, the committee's job is not always easy. It's a really good point because while I like four, because I feel like we're getting the four really, truly best contenders for championship, if you can lose your SEC title game, not only are you rewarding a loss, but you're also forcing Georgia then to potentially beat Alabama twice. I mean, if Georgia's going to win a national championship, they got to beat them in Atlanta and then beat them again in the college football playoff. That also, that part of it doesn't necessarily seem right, right? No, that's potentially true. I've even heard the argument that if Georgia loses a close one, that they're still one of the best four teams in the country, and if we're judging the best four teams, then they should be in. And then we're looking at Alabama-Georgia again. Because you're not going to put Georgia the three after they lose, right? So we're gonna, you're going to put Clemson number one instead to avoid that immediate rematch. So, yeah, there's a lot to that. I, I always wanted it to be a 16 playoff where one and two got a bye. If you go to eight, You've got to play some home games, so you're not asking fans to make three flights by the time their team's in the national championship game. There's the thought by New Heisel to go to 16, get rid of the conference championship games. You know, back before we had seven teams in a division or six teams in a division in conference title games, you know, the Iron Bowl would be like a national quarterfinal. That was the springboard for, for Auburn to get to the BCS championship game against Florida State before we had the playoffs. So, it's, uh, it's, it's wild, man. And, look, we've had a lot of changes. Uh, I don't normally love it, love changes, but depending on the circumstances, you know, I can see where you just you, you quiet the anger. I, I don't want to see 16. Um, I would, I, I'm, I'm just coming around on eight myself. Adam Zucker joins us from the SEC on CBS. We'll wrap up with the hiring of Mac Brown at North Carolina. This follows Herm Edwards. At Arizona State last year, we've heard rumblings that Texas Tech would love to bring Mike Leach back, if that's possible. Let me ask you, what do you think about the nostalgia effect or just simply bringing back an old coach that has has had success somewhere in the past, even if they've been out of coaching for a while like Mac Brown? It amazes me. And I actually, I, you know, I work with two of those guys. I work with Rick Neuheisel. I work with Houston Nutt. And for a few years there, the cycle was, all right, well, let's go grab this hot offensive coordinator. Let's go grab this this young coach out of the MAC. We need young, young, young. I mean, the point you just made is most personified by Les Miles being hired at Hampton. Right. So, yeah, you know, and, and Todd Graham might be the guy to go to Texas Tech. I don't think Mike Leach really cares to go back to Lubbock after some of what happened there. Yeah. Uh, but, but I think there's a part of the job is program CEO. There is so much that these guys have to do, and there's, I think, maybe been a period of time where the experience of being in that position as program CEO was underrated, and dealing with conflict, off the field stuff, maybe that's a, maybe become more of a priority for some of these schools, especially you know you got Larry Fedora at ACC Media Day denying the effects of of football concussions on and CTE, and it's like, come on, man, you know. Uh, well, go watch the Tim Green piece on 60 Minutes again. And, and, and there's a guy who still would go back and make every hit he made. So uh, I think maybe, we just, like you said, it's, it's a bit of a trend going in that direction. And maybe there isn't that glut of coordinators ready to pop. Uh, I'm waiting to see if there's one guy. I can't remember his name right now because I'm sitting in the back seat of the car. <laughs> but 
the head coach at Colgate, they, they've got like half a dozen shutouts this year. So just like Chip Kelly made that big jump from New Hampshire back in the day, I want to see where uh, if someone plucks the Colgate guy uh, to come be a defensive mind somewhere. The Red Raiders defense, the best in the country, statistically best speaking, the, the best the best in the country. The SEC championship game with Adam, Brian Jones, Rick Neuheisel. Coverage at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, drive to Atlanta, presented, presented by Mercedes-Benz. 3 p.m. Eastern time, college football today, presented by State Farm. Then kickoff for Bama and Georgia at 4 p.m. Eastern time, the SEC title game. And then Zucker is also scheduled to join us on Sunday morning football. Following all this for instant reaction, Sunday morning here on CBS Sports Radio. Adam, have a great trip. Can't wait to see the coverage, buddy. We'll be locked in, and hopefully we'll talk to you Sunday morning as well. Awesome, man. It's going to be a lot of TV, and uh, I'll be in a car when we talk Sunday morning, too. All right. Sounds good, brother. You be well. (laughs) See ya. Okay. Adam Zucker joining us this morning here on the show.